Okay, uh, so here we are again, uh, just to kind of talk about maybe how could uh, sleep position, right, affect um, your airway or contribute to snoring or sleep disordered breathing. So in general, we tell patients, you know, when preferred, regardless, right, we'd like people to either sleep on their back or possibly their side. Definitely avoid sleeping on your stomach at all costs. Um, if you, you know, obviously if you can, and especially because that puts your head, you have to rotate it one way or another, it puts a lot of compromised irritation through the neck area, much harder to breathe because your chest is being uh, compressed all night long. And then very important, uh, the vertebral artery, you know, uh, important blood supply to our brain. So when we sleep on our stomach and turn our head to one extreme, um, it can really affect the oxygenation uh, to our brain, which of course, that's very crucial and vital. But to continue on with the topic, so if someone uh, was having some sleep disordered breathing, or let's just say that they, they complain that their uh, spouse uh, would snore at night, some of the, I guess, biomechanical things that are going on. So in this case, so Molly, let's say she's resting comfortably at night. You can tell her lips are closed. Uh, we, we would hope and like that our tongue would ascend into the roof of our mouth and be putting very light pressure in the roof of our mouth. And of course, we're breathing through our nose. I mean, that would be the healthy, important way for us to be able to sleep all night long. Our, our nose is a wonderful filter to catch bacteria and pollutants so it doesn't affect our upper airway in, within, inside of our throat. For example, that's what happens with the tonsils when they get swollen, is that they start collecting all these pollutants and irritants and they get larger because they're essentially like a lymph gland. And then, and then we have you know, larger issues and bigger problems. So it's gonna probably be hard to tell from the video, but you know what we're talking about here is that generally, when we are breathing through our nose, our lips are together and we've got good seal, you know, our jaw, our mandible, uh, seats in a little bit more you know, uh, uh, superior position or slightly forward as our, our, our teeth you know, are just slightly apart. But if, let's say you're sick or it's your seasonal allergies possibly or you've just had chronic rhinitis, we then are forced to breathe through our mouth, right? Because our nose is plugged at night. We also know too sometimes our sinuses can be very positional. Those can get worse when we're laying down. And all of a sudden at night, our mouth opens up so we can get better airway. And what you probably can't tell, but then what will happen is our jaw will basically ever so subtly drop down and back, right? Part of it is that it's opening up, but then it will also drop down and back. And as our mandible drops down and back, well, the base of our tongue or the back of our tongue can follow. And then our tongue can now start to fold a little bit and that can block our airway. If you saw in that other video, right, we're trying to see big, patent, wide open space, um, but then our tongue can drop back, block our airway, and then as we breathe, we will uh, maybe start to get that snoring sound of the vibration of, of snoring that's going on. And then what also you will find will happen, and it's very subtle, is in order, since again, assuming we can't breathe through our nose, um, and we need to breathe more and more through our mouth, in order to open up our upper airway, people tend to have to tip their head back. So then they wonder, why am I waking up maybe with neck pain? Why do I wake up with headaches? So we think again, this is why it's so crucial to have good breathing through your nose when you can. Uh, or again, if you have to wear a CPAP or some other things, uh, or there are, of course, appliances that are being applied that people wear in their mouth. But this is kind of a, a, what can be an ab, abnormal adaption to having to breathe through your mouth. And then you can probably appreciate if you kind of just look at Molly's jaw a little bit versus first, let's say, when she starts out and she's here. And as her head slowly tips back further at night to improve her airway, her mandible will tend to drop back even a little more. Uh, in, in sort of this position. So one of our suggestions could be, of course, is, well, first of all, trying to do everything we can to assess why you're congested, why your sinuses are an issue. So whether that's getting you to a good ENT, working with your primary doctor, allergist, etc., cetera, um, we wanna to try to explore how we can improve this area for breathing. But at night, what can be very helpful is to just simply have someone try to go onto their side. So I'd have Molly, and sometimes you have to double up the pillow because you know you want to try to keep the cervical spine, your neck in a, a good neutral position. But this is why sometimes we will then recommend side sleeping because even if you do uh, 
happen to open up your mouth to breathe at night, um, less chance that your tongue and your jaw, your mandible, will drop down and back and block your airway through the throat area. And sometimes I've actually had people develop, I call them like little bumpers. Uh, so develop, um, you know, little, like if you remember a side sleeper for babies, but little bumpers that you can put on the front and the back of you. So it will keep you from rolling back at night or rolling forward. Or other things we've had people do is if you have someone who's crafty at home, get a t-shirt and have them sew in uh, two tennis balls in the front and two in the back. So if you should roll onto your back, it'll be a little, it won't really wake you up at night, but it'll be just enough for you to not want to, of course, sleep on your back or sleep on your stomach. So there are some great ways to try and, um, you know, break these habits because that's what they, they are after a while, right? They're, they're positional habits we want to try to break to improve our sleep quality. So there's just some pointers of all of the different things we look at, again, from a physical therapy perspective and a sleep and airway perspective. Thank you very much.